Okay, so let's start. Yes, it's time. It's time to start. Very well. So it's uh, the fourth lecture, the final in this series. Maybe we'll continue sometimes later, but uh, not in this year. Um, so let me summarize where we've been uh, up so far. We've discussed uh, supersymmetrical uh, gauge theories, supersymmetries in various dimensions, and then um, we specialized to n equals to supersymmetric theory in four dimensions, which meant that it had uh, uh, eight supercharges. Yes, and uh, we explained how it connects to integrable system, complex integrable system, or algebraic integrable system. On the modular space of vacuum, namely, let me call the theories theory T. And for algebraic integrable system, we had notations as a vibration from P to U. And uh, P comes at the modular space of vacuum, vacuum of the theory T on R3 times S1. So it's hypercalar space or holomorphic symplectic space. And it's fibered over the modular space of vacuum of the theory T on R4, which is a special color. So this is hypercalar fibered over special color. And uh, so the fibers are abelian varieties. And the correspondence is that the period matrix of the abelian variety in a given point of modular space of vacuum uh, corresponds to the coupling constant of infrared theory, which is U1 to R, abelian theory, where, where R is the rank of this integrable system. So rank R means that uh, phase space P is 2R dimensional complex space. Yes, so these are of complex dimensions R. There's a rank R abelian variety. And period matrix is, we express it as a matrix, I by R times R matrix. So this coupling constant, tau ij, it couples to the gauge fields as its real part couples to the second Chern class and the imaginary part so the action is of this has this form, and the imaginary part of tau ij couples to the Young Mills the Young Mills uh, functional. So f i which uh, star of j. And uh, as last time we uh, reviewed uh, very carefully. The S duality transformation, S duality or electromagnetic duality, this is a synonym in this case uh, for SL2Z action on the H1 of the abelian variety, it corresponds to electromagnetic duality uh, on this side. So tau is really not a matrix, it's is, uh, is an abelian variety. It's, it's a point in the modular space of abelian variety. Well, one question. Is yes. really a priori for physical reason that the base is complex R-dimensional space? Yeah. Is there a natural complex structure on the base? Yeah. That's the question? Yeah. Yes, yes. And it responds to what? To deforming by fields? Oh, well, it, 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 it follows from the analysis of uh, n equals to uh, SUSE. n equals to SUSE implies that the module space has to be a special color. And, and special, well, yes. So even even n equals one SUSE implies that it has to be color. n equals two SUSE implies that it has to be special. Mm -hmm. So and the hypercolor structure. Uh, so the tangent space corresponds to some kind of particles in this vacuum. Yeah. Uh, 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 the tangent space of the base. Yeah. 
The tension space of the base corresponds to the uh, just the differential of the complex scalars in the vector multiplet that you have here. To the yes, to the deformation. So we have in the low energy you have the maps from the space time to the modular space. Yes, and uh, slowly varying maps correspond to the change of, of scalars. Okay, so that's uh, the summary. Yes, are there questions about summary? Other questions. Oh yes, maybe one point uh, to add to this summary. The Hilbert space depends on the vacuum, yeah. Uh, this, the Hilbert space of the theory on R four yes depends on the choice of uh, vacuum. Yes, it's like super selection sector. Yes, yes. Um, so maybe one 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 more line to add here is uh, Zeibert-Witten curve, of course, and Zeibert-Witten differential. Okay, and the special uh, electric magnetic coordinates. So let's let's uh, just. Right summary here. So here we have one form lambda, which is a Zyberg Witten Leoville one form, so that uh, d lambda is omega, that's holomorphic symplectic structure. Symplectic structure on P on the phase space. And uh, well lambda is meromorphic generally. Yes, because if uh, omega has non-trivial non uh, periods, then if it's non-trivial element of uh, H2, then uh, you cannot find uh, one form which is everywhere holomorphic and the differential is defined. So lambda has to be meromorphic, it has poles. Uh, the residues on, on those poles are determined by the masses of the theory. I, I don't want to uh, dwell on it uh, for lack of time. So here, uh, you have the holomorphic coordinates AI and BI. There's a special coordinates. Uh, well, uh, not not uh, not uh, not quite. Um, so these are these are coordinates. These are special coordinates. These are action variables on the base. Action variables. On base, on base U, and they are de uh, determined by the periods over alpha i and beta i cycles, which are in in the, in the basis of H one. Of the abelian fibers, of this uh, one form differential. So they, they are holomorphic coordinates on the base. There are R of them, and they come in duality that uh, DAI is tau IJ DBJ. So on uh, the left side, uh, in the four-dimensional gauge theory, this uh, special coordinates AI, BI on the base, they define to what is called central charge. Central charge. It's an element of the super Poincaré and equals to algebra in four dimensions. That it comes when we constructed that algebra. It comes from the dimensional reduction of uh, fifth and sixth coordinate. So that uh, the complexification of the fifth and sixth comes as the momentum in uh, fifth and sixth dimension. From the four dimensional perspective, it's just a scalar, and uh, then. The value of the central charge on a state, on a state with electric charge and the magnetic charge, electric charge and I, and magnetic charge M I is given by N I A I plus M I B I. Okay, so. Uh, one more comment, the BPS. You want to put the indices up and down? So uh, uh, yes, it, it, it would be good to do that. So let's do this convention, send I, AI upstairs, uh, M, I upstairs, B, I downstairs. So if I, I think I fold it uh, maybe here. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, here, here, 
here I actually uh, swapped uh, mistakenly the, the conventions. It was the dBi is given by the period matrix of tau ig dig and also this tau ig is the second derivative of the prepotential function. Which is a multi-valued function. Uh, yes, uh, it's, it, it defined, it, it's defined locally, yeah. yes. Yeah, so BPS states, which we also reviewed, I think, in the second lecture, they are characterized by the condition that the mass of the states equals to the absolute value of the central charge, and they come in what's called short multiplet. So Maxim is expert on uh, counting the number of such states. Uh, okay, now so let me just leave that uh, for reference, and now let's discuss quantization on the side of the integrable system. So so far we had that classical integrable system. And it's adapted from a field theory. We have a classical yes. system, and now we quantize it. Yes, 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 yes. We started from quantum field theory. We discussed only the low energy sector of this quantum field theory, and that low energy sector is just a classical manifold variety, well, with a certain special, well, with geometry that we've discussed. And now we want to understand uh, what about quantization. Uh, okay, so. So there are two, two ways to um, to quantization in a sense. And uh, roughly, they can be summarized as follows. Well, they, they, in the literature, they refer to as an S for Nekrasov and Shatashvili. No. Sorry, <laughs> overlap with notations. And AGT, it's Aldai Gayota Tajikawa. Uh, so, on the side of uh, gauge theories, so here you consider a deformation, certain def deformation of n equals 2 theory. And I will call that uh, deformation T sub epsilon here and uh, T sub epsilon 1, epsilon 2 here. And I will explain uh, more precisely it means that you study, you start from studying the theory not on flat background R4, but on certain curved background and the parameter of that uh, curvature. Well, it's not on the curvature of the Riemann tensor. In, in fact, it's curvature of other auxiliary fields of supergravity uh, background. If you want a physical approach, mathematically, it could be explained much easier. I'll do that in a second. And here you'll do that on a background with two parameters, epsilon 1, epsilon 2. Now, on the side of integrable systems, well, uh, here you have the here, indeed, you have integrable system that we had before, P2U, which is a holomorphic uh, vibration in the complex structure, uh, which is usually called in literature I, so it's convention. So let's say that that integrable system that we had here, it's I holomorphic. But you should remember that uh, the, f the module space of vacuum on the theory of R3 times S1 is hyperkeller, so it has actually CP1 worth of uh, complex structures, yes. So uh, let me put it here. There is a CP1 worth of complex structures over here, and the three orthogonal ones, usually called IJK, corresponding to three quaternionic units, imaginary units. So in complex structure I, uh, this is holomorphic vibration, and in the case of Hitchin systems, so for example, uh, 
again, that's uh, Higgs bundles. Higgs bundles if if P to U is Hitchin system. It doesn't have to be Hitchin system, but just to explain uh, what I means. So uh, in this case, uh, the quantization is the quantization of uh, of the holomorphic symplectic structure. So you consider the deformation quantization of the algebra of functions on P with respect to the holomorphic symplectic structure omega i. So, omega i with a parameter 1 over epsilon. So uh, epsilon is h bar. Okay. Uh, the deformation parameters are all real. Uh, no, I, epsilon uh, can be complex valued. Uh, doesn't have to be a real valued. So here you have uh, uh, this, it's holomorphic symplectic space. So you have a Poisson bracket, holomorphic Poisson bracket on the holomorphic functions on the uh, phase space P. And then uh, you consider the algebra, which uh, quantizes uh, this uh, space of function in, 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 in the usual uh, way. Okay, now for this story, you uh, you don't have uh, the structure for. Yes, you root it. Each bar is a formal parameter or actual parameter. It's actual parameter. Yes, it's it's, it's not formal quantization. It it's uh, it's actual quantization. Yeah, differential operator. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. So uh, here, you don't have vibration. And so we forget about it because the vibration, because we want to look on the phase space in the complex structure G. So let me call it, so let me call this I quantization. I quantization of P. Okay. And let me call it, P is hypercolor, yes. And let me, uh, so we, we look at it as holomorphic, holomorphic, uh, space in complex structure. And let me call it J, J quantization of P in uh, a complex structure J. So for example, uh, that's the modular space of uh, flat connections. So G, GC flat connections. on uh, Riemann surface C, if you started, if P to U was Hitchin system. Okay, so it's uh, the other complex structure. And you do quantization in this other complex structure. Uh, you don't have uh, now the, uh, this, uh, this vibration, so you don't come with integrable system, you, you come with something else, but still with the with with quantum theory. And that's what uh, AGT, uh, AGT about. So it's a deformation quantization, quantization of, okay, of the functions on uh, this total space P in the complex structure J. So let me put it sub I here and sub G here. And the deformation uh, parameter is the ratio of these two epsilons, epsilon two or epsilon one omega sub j. Okay, so now uh, to understand what we are talking about, we need to explain what is the left side, namely what does mean to the deformation of the theory T, what, or what does mean the theory on R4 sub epsilon or sub epsilon 1 sub epsilon 2, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the side in, a, in a several concrete examples when we actually know wh what the uh, integrable system is. Those examples would be a uh, Hitchin system or group-like uh, version of Hitchin system or elliptic-like version of Hitchin system that we talked uh, last time or more generally the modular space of G bundles on a Poisson surface. Um, there are questions? No? 
Yes, local systems. This seems like traces of monodromies. Yes, 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 exactly, yes. Traces of monodromies, yes. Yes, so it's uh, flat connections, tr uh, yes, yes. So the, the, the coordinates uh, here could be, could be traces of monodromies. It depends on the complex parameter, like... Uh, uh, yes, yes, exactly. So uh, in complex structure J, uh, this space P, it doesn't depend on the complex uh, structure of Riemann surface. Yes, it's, uh, it's kind of topological with respect to... Yes, 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 yes. So it's uh, for, it's for Goncharov, and uh, yes, uh, we'll come to more details. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's uh, start maybe from the left side, from the uh, gauge theory. Okay. So uh, on gauge theory, the story goes back to. Uh, not sure how far it should go back, but well, it starts. It is the notion of uh, covariant cohomologies, which I, I don't have time to review, but uh, for physicists, a rough idea that when you have a manifold M and G, which acts on M, and M mod G is not smooth, and you want to study the homo uh, homology of the space M mod G, then you want to define some appropriate uh, a uh, tool to deal with that, and it's called covariant cohomology. And, uh, and that's uh, uh, what we are going to use. Now, um, physically, the deformation of the theory of T for uh, sub epsilon one, sub epsilon two, so which, which is which was done by Nikrasov, and goes back to uh, papers of Nikrasov and uh, lots of Moore and Shatashvili. So <coughs> you consider. That uh, Donaldson twist, Donaldson Newton twist, of n equals to d equals four theory, and this twist uh, means the following: you uh, take the Lorentz group SO four, which is SU two times SU two left, SU two right. You also consider the R symmetry. Remember that n equals to super algebra, algebra comes by reduction of uh, n equals one d equals six, and uh, it has a symplectic symmetry built in sp1 corresponding to the the doublet of the spinner that we used to construct the representation s. It was s plus times c2. So there is sp1 which acts by uh, Automorphism of, of, C, of, C, of C2 preserving the canonical symplectic form here. So there is a, okay, I, would, uh, I write a compact version of it, C2 R symmetry. So uh, the supercharges they transform with respect to the spinner representation of SO4 and with respect to R symmetry. And then you consider uh, a diagonal uh, embedding of R symmetry into, let's say, SE2R uh, subgroup. And after that, the, the supercharges, they uh, form the 8 tuplet of the following way. You have from the left and right spinners, you get the following thing. From right spinners, you have a scalar and self dual two form and from left you get a vector. Okay. And then uh, one can rewrite the super symmetry of n equals to theory as a cohomological like transformations. 
And so the, the, the origin of the ensemble Witten twist uh, corresponds to taking the supercharge Q generated by the scalar eta. And such theory can be defined on any, uh, on any mon uh, manifold, on any topological manifold, and the, the partition function of such theory reduces uh, to computation of the integrals of the module space of flat connections on this model of uh, certain uh, cohomological class. Now, the idea of uh, uh, Loisif, Morshi, Tashvili, and uh, Nikrasov is uh, to complement the supercharge by a vector field V if the manifold has an isometry with respect to the action of, uh, of some compact uh, uh, Lie group. So uh, the concrete uh, example of R4 sub epsilon 1 sub epsilon 2 is the following. You take R4, write it as R2 plus R2, and consider SO2 so two actions on these two planes, the Lie algebra parameters epsilon 1, epsilon 2. So physically speaking, it corresponds to turning on certain uh, background fields of the, super uh, of the supergravity, which break Lorentz invariance, and put the theory into something like infrared well. So if this is R4, then the theory becomes confined to uh, a well whose uh, dimension, whose characteristic dimension is of the order one over epsilon. So it's like infrared cutoff. This infrared cutoff of the n equals to theory imposed in a smart way to preserve uh, one of the supercharges. Now, uh, so let, let me now write mathematical uh, definition of uh, what we compute. We compute the partition function of n equals to theory in such background. This partition function is uh, called Nikrasov partition function. And uh, this function is defined as follows. So let's uh, okay. Let's decide. That let's fix the notations that we start from the gauge theory defined by Lagrangian. It's defined for the gauge theory with Lagrangian, and uh, which was uh, parameterized by the gauge group G and flavor symmetry F and the hypermultiplet and representation R of G times F. So it's gauge flavor quaternionic representation of G times F. So let's define the partition function. So let M would be the modular space you are careful, you need to consider uh, some resolution of this modular space maybe better to say modulus stack, modulus space of G bundles, so that's holomorphic G bundles on C2 with a fixed framing at infinity on CP1. Well, at CP1 at infinity corresponding to the one point corresponding to the compactive to the nature of compactive projective compactific compactification of C2. So uh, yes, and uh, now this modular space is subject to the action of the groups G, G sub C, X on M by just action on the fiber of the trivialization of uh, G bundle at uh, CP1 with infinity. And also, uh, okay, and also GL, GL of C2, on which we consider these bundles, also acts on M. Okay, in addition, you define over this modular space of G bundles a uh, shift which is called matter shift. 
So let me call it R hat. Meta shift on M. And uh, physically speaking, the, this matter shift is the following. You consider in a given instant on a background, well, the, the holomorphic G bundles, they correspond to G instantons on R4. So you pick uh, a point here, you consider this G instanton on R4, and then you solve Dirac equation in a representation R in a given instant on the background. And that Dirac equation has a number of... Uh, uh, solution in left and right sector, and you consider virtual bundle the difference between the zero modes of Dirac operator in left sector and zero modes of the Dirac operator in uh, right sector. So mathematically, the same thing is uh, 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 is uh, uh, <coughs> is said uh, by the following. So this matter shift on M is the push forward. of the matter shift R of a universal modular space M times C2 and the projection to the modular space. Yeah, so you, you, you consider the cohomology of double operator, which is valued in the representation R of G group, and then you take a bundle over the space M whose fibers are the uh, cohomology of that, of that operator. Okay, are there definitions clear? Yeah, yeah. If you remember correctly, as people discussed some of this actual of two rotations, yes. one can go make series of ellipsoids. Yeah, it could be. Uh, yes, it's just it's just uh, it's just taking these parameters to be different. Those ellipsoids are yeah yeah. So yes. just, instead of this, when when see a quick variable, can say that can see the series on ellipsoids. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, at the level of the original uh, Young Mir section, yes, the putting V mu correspond to adding what. So, uh, so at the level of the original action, when you add v mu, you do something like like that. Very good. So you have, uh, for example, for the scalars, yes. So you have uh, their operator. Okay. You, uh, you you do the following thing. You you had your complex scalar. In the vector multiplet, and you remember that uh, the supercharge in the Donaldson vision theory, it was square to the gauge transformation by this complex uh, scalar. So it would be A times nothing. Gauge transformation by I. And now you replace A by A plus V mu A mu. So you do this uh, substitution in the Lagrangian. And there are some other substitutions to make it supersymmetric, but uh, this is the, the essential one. In, in the Lagrangian, I had A, a dagger uh, commutator square, no? In yes, yes, in the Lagrangian, you have A, A bar commutator square. In particular, one thing you do in the Lagrangian, you replace here A by, 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 by this combination. Okay, but uh, the Lagrangian becomes quite, quite complicated. It's not. And it's not really useful to write it down here, but uh, <coughs> physically speaking, if you look carefully in this Lagrangian, you'll see that the theory becomes uh, infinitely weakly coupled when you go to the too far to the far to infinity, and the theory is like supported in a neighborhood of the origin, and the, the size of that neighborhood is one over epsilon. It's like in a quadratic well potential. The theory becomes becomes infrared regulated. Also, also there is another, as Maxim mentioned, there is a story which relates that to ellipsoids. So you can, uh, instead of uh, doing the deformation, you can just uh, consider the theory on a background with curvature. And like, if you, if you do it around sphere, 
round is 4 of, ra of radius r, uh, that would correspond to taking epsilon 1, epsilon 2, 1 over r, and uh, two copies of uh, the theory for, 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 for the two fixed points on S4 under, under a chosen rotation. Can epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 be identified with H1 somehow? Uh, so, well, as we reviewed here, uh, in one quantization, epsilon, when, when one epsilon is 0 and only one epsilon is present, then epsilon is H bar, exactly. In the second quantization, no, it's ratio of epsilons, which is H bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so then the partition function Z. is the integral of the modular space of G bundles. And C2 that uh, you've defined over there. And uh, here I take uh, the union, uh, okay, so that modular space, it, it, it is the uh, disjoint union of modular spaces parameterized by the second chern classes. So we'll take the Second chern class. Of the components M sub K. And uh, the contribution from each of uh, such piece of the modular space is taken valued with the coupling constant Q. to the k, and then you integrate the equivalent Taylor class of that matter shift. So it's equivalent with respect to the group uh, G. Okay, let, let me call it equivalent group. And G equivalent is uh, GC times FC, I mean just complexification of the flavor center group and uh, and GL2, which acts on the space time. Yes, so the, the result of that you can also interpret as a push forward of a cohomology class, which is written over here, under the map from M to the point. Yes, that, that's what it means to integrate. So Z is a function, Z is an element in the G equivariant cohomologies of a point. What it means in practice that it's a function of joint invariant function on the Lie algebra of uh, G equivariant. And the uh, coordinates on the Lie algebra of G equivariant are usually called a, the same A that we had on the left uh, board, the special electric coordinates, and the masses uh, for the Lie algebra values of the flavor symmetry group, and epsilon 1, epsilon 2 for the uh, carton of GL2. This partition function is later be called rational version. 
in the sense that there is a trigonometric version and elliptic version of it. Like uh, there is a ordinary Dirac cohomology, there is K-theory and elliptic cohomology. And uh, <coughs> in terms of the gauge theory constructions, this one corresponds to taking the gauge theory on S1 times R4 epsilon 1 epsilon 2, and this is on T2 times R4 epsilon 1 epsilon 2. In terms of the, uh, computing the push forward of uh, respective cohomologies, here you take the integral of the modular space of uh, the uh, dot character of the tangent bundle to Tm and uh, Chern character of all uh, uh, exterior uh, powers of the matter sheaf. So in terms of chain roots, if xi are chain roots of, uh, of this guy, then for the rational case, we had uh, just the product of the chain roots for the Euler characteristic. Here we have the product of our, uh, of our two sine xi over 2. And finally, for the elliptic case, you replace these rational factors by th elliptic functions. And uh, the conventions are such that uh, this thing has periods x to x plus 2 pi and x to x plus 2 pi tau where tau is the uh, elliptic modules of uh, that uh, T2 torus on which we compactify the 6D theory. Uh, so uh, the trigonometric uh, partition function takes value in the, again, the, uh, in the, uh, in, in the case-theoretical cohomology of the point, which are functions, adjoint invariant functions on the Lie group itself, so the Z-trig is a function on G, on G sub C equivariant, adjoint invariant function. Okay? And the elliptical is adjoint is a adjoint invariant function on the modular space. of the equivariant bundles on this elliptic curve, T sub tau. We should, can one use its kind of reversal of <coughs> classes and get like symmetric functions on functions in many variables? Uh, uh, you, uh, you, uh, yes, yes, yeah. are you asking? Because the universal bundle can make a lot of things and get functions in infinite many variables here. Yes, yes. Is it some kind of physical, can one get some like power functions? Or? Ah, yes, 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 yes. It's possible to get uh, something like tau functions. You need to, uh, uh, yes, you, 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 you can insert here the uh, some other cohomology classes coupled with, yes, yes, yes. It corresponds to something, doing something with your gauge theory or? Uh, well, in terms of topological string, we know what it corresponds to, but I'm not sure uh, to what it, uh, or to well describe what it corresponds on the gauge theory side. It, it corresponds to some uh, high derivative deformation of the gauge theory, like uh, like adding to the gauge theory uh, terms of not like uh, phi squ uh, f squared, where f is the curvature, 
but uh, high high terms. Um, I have a much more basic question. Um, yes. What do we actually do with this S1 cross R4, epsilon, epsilon 2? Um, yes, yeah, so, so you think, okay, so due to this localization uh, thing, what happens is that the path integral uh, localizes on the instanton, instantons in the five dimensional space, S1 times R4. And instantons in five dimensional space is uh, they, they have codimension four, so they, they are like uh, particles which traveling along that S one. So it means that the partition function computes the supersymmetric index on the modular space of the instantons. In other, the other way to say that, that the path, path integral here in this situation reduces to the integral on the loop space of the modular space of instantons, and that's why it. Uh, it's a k, k theoretical version. So it's a quantum mechanics on the module space. The m on the right <coughs> is the m that we had before on just R4. Yes, yes, yes. This is the module space of instantons on R4. But uh, you see here it's the index-like formula. You, you, you compute the index of uh, that matter shift. This is just uh, Hirze, Bruch, Riemann, Roch, uh, Grothendieck formula for the index, yes? Uh, for the index of the Dirac operator valued in uh, that uh, matter shift R on uh, this instant on uh, modular space, and the partition function Z is just the the, the index the, uh, the the partition function of the quantum mechanics of the loop space of the instant on modular space. Okay, and uh, the the elliptical one when you replace the characteristic classes by theta 1 functions, it uh, essentially elliptic genus of the instant on module space. Uh, everything is equivalent. Everything is equivalent with respect to the action of this G-equivalent group, which I remind is just the gauge group, the flavor symmetry group, and GL2, which acts on the space time C2. But also there's this Q, which is, has nothing to do with elliptic. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it, it, it's an extra parameter. Q is the gauge coupling constant it has nothing to do with, uh, it's a separate elliptic parameter, yes, yes, that's right. Okay, so the function z, as it has been defined there, if you write it as exponent of uh, minus 1 over epsilon 1, epsilon 2, f of a, m, q, epsilon, well, that the tau parameter if we are in the elliptical case. One can uh, check that uh, this, is, has, this thing has a smooth limit when epsilon 1, epsilon 2 go to 0. In other words, log of z times epsilon 1, epsilon 2. The limit of that on the ascent to 0 is a prepotential function f of a m q and this is the Zyberg Witten prepotential. So here I've sent both of them to zero. When we keep uh, both, well, it doesn't really matter uh, which we are in those two situations, it's completely classical situation. So this is totally classical situation. Both epsilons are set to zero. And we are back to the classical case of, uh, of this board, of the zyberg witten case. So the prepotential function, it depends only on A, M, and Q. There are no epsilons left. Oh, uh, that Q is the coupling constant of the gauge theory. Uh, the, of the original gauge theory, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Q, uh, Q with a slash like that, I will use notation Q slashed for the coupling constant of the original gauge theory. 
of the exponential of tau, tau. of tau parameter of the original gauge theory. You're saying epsilon one, epsilon two equals to zero is the ratio of those epsilon one and epsilon two kept fixed. Or it just, uh, it, it just doesn't matter. The, the ratio doesn't matter. Yeah, but also you get not just one limit, you get two. One for the metric special is not necessary because you can put the various. various. Uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. There are, there are three lines corresponding to uh, that uh, board. So, so, so and not only one that you have the real trigonometric version of this guy's yeah. uh, Yes, 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 yes. But uh, these trigonometric versions. Uh, it's not like you take any zyberg witten system and you automatically from it uh, can get a trigonometric or elliptic version. It doesn't work uh, that way. It's not, uh, but, but, but you have a families. You even through this theory, not arbitrary. Yes, 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 yes. So, um, okay, uh, l l l let's say it better. So if you start from um, gauge theory, on R4, you get zyberg witten system. If you start from a gauge theory, if it's defined on S1 times R4, you get Zyberg system as well, which we would call trigonometric Zyberg system. And that would be elliptic Zyberg system. But not every uh, rational Zyberg system has a lift. Okay. You have that index U, okay. uh, Yes, I added the index UV. It's a function of, uh, of the gauge coupling parameter in the UV. Which stands to zero, we are asymptotically free. Uh, well, so if, if you are in the asymptotically free case, then you fix it at some UV scale, you fix it some scale lambda. Uh, for, for concise uh, presentation, it's better to say that we are considering conformal field theory. And so that uh, QV is fixed really at the infinite energy, it never, it, it never runs. And if you want then to study asymptotically free, uh, theories that you can always embed a symptotically free theory into a conformal th field theory by taking your theory at the scale much less than some mass. I mean, uh, you, you take a massive deformation of conformal field theory and, and go to the low energy scales. Okay, so this is uh, zyberg witten prepotential. So let me, in a, in a sense, keep only the parameters A here, M and Q. So M and Q, the parameters of the zyberg witten system, they define that vibration P over U. Yes, and A is the coordinate on the base. On the base U. So that's, uh, the, that's how one recovers the classical uh, relation from that uh, deformation in the uh, omega. It's called deformation by the omega background, by omega in the sense of angular momentum rotation of the space-time C2. So this is classical. Now, uh, okay, now the NS limit Okay, that's classical cyber quitten case, the, yes. Uh, excuse me, VG. Oh, for large A, yes, yes, yes. If A, if A goes to infinity, then F looks like A squared log A uh, plus, um, plus with some coefficients, well, plus expansion in the, in the powers over A's. And uh, it's not only quantum, it's non perturbative. Yes, it's not perturbative uh, expansion of the QST, so this is instant on corrections. Yes, 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 of course. So classical, it, uh, uh, it uh, always in a sense of what we talked here. So full quantum field theory with all non-perturbative corrections in this vacuous sector corresponds to classical integrable system. So I mean uh, classical, classical integrable system. Okay, classical zyberg witten integrable system which corresponds to full non-perturbative four-dimensional quantum field theory. Yes. And now uh, we are discussing quantization of this uh, classical uh, zyberg witten integral system. And we, we, we said that uh, on the gauge theory side, that quantization corresponds to space-time deformation of the theory by parameters epsilon. OK, so an S limit is it's, it's super, super gravity, deformation by supergravity. So epsilon is a parameter 
uh, which defines non-trivial supergravity background for the gauge theory, for the gauge theory which is studied on that supergravity background, away from the flat R4 space. So epsilon uh, uh, are essentially parameterized uh, supergravity auxiliary fields. Yeah. Well, and matrix, I mean everything, uh, sugar background. So in, in S limit, you send one epsilon to zero, and then you can define a function <coughs> limit of epsilon two to zero of minus epsilon two. log z, and that would be a function f of a, m, q, and now one epsilon parameter, which is kept fixed. And what that function is? Well, this function is called uh, twisted, chiral twisted superpotential. Of uh, two comma two, it's using d equals four two-dimensional gauge theory. So let's see uh, how it works. You consider the theory on R four subject to one epsilon parameter, and compactify it on a circle. So actually you do it, since we, are, we, want, we, we, we want to look at the phase space, we compactify it on a circle, so let's do it as a R3 with one epsilon parameter times this one. And that R3 with one epsilon parameter it has time, which I will denote by R1 sub t times R2, on which epsilon acts, times S1. So the thing on which epsilon acts, the two plane, it looks like, it has like cigar geometry, where epsilon uh, acts by such rotation. And so it's convenient to think about it as a, a theory on the interval well, if you uh, put the theory in some finite volume and there is a certain cutoff at this distance, there is an interval, and over this interval there is S1 vibration, S1 sub epsilon, which is fiber of that interval, and S1 sub epsilon, it shrinks to zero on the left uh, boundary of the interval. Okay? So then the geometry is the following. You have uh, R, the time, times interval uh, times S1. Okay. And uh, if you integrate out KK modes on this compact space, on this cigar geometry, you get a two-dimensional theory on the cylinder RT times this circle. So this uh, function F is the superpotential of the two-dimensional 2 comma 2 d equals 2 gauge theory on r sub t times s1. The, 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 that follows from uh, manipulations with Lagrangians from physical computation. <laughs> It doesn't respect the supersymmetry model. Yes, it does. Either with or without the three dimensions, because you cannot compute the width you want. That's right. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't preserve the. Yes, it doesn't preserve what we want. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So let's uh, let's. Uh, I like. I really like to keep it. So okay. Let me just delete this and keep the upper line. and write it here. So, <coughs> how do we see actually quantum mechanics here? 
Okay, so we compactified uh, to, to see quantum mechanics. We we need to have one coordinate equivalent to r the time, and then we need to have a compact space. So that compact sp uh, space comes as follow. You compactify the remaining directions on S1, yes? Then you have a three-dimensional space-time. And in this three-dimensional space-time, OK, one, one coordinate is time. So what is left is two-dimensional space-time. And in this two-dimensional space-time, R2 sub epsilon. So there is this uh, supergravity background, which puts the theory into a well. And uh, all the di all dynamics of the theory becomes localized near the point, near the origin fixed point on this R2 epsilon. So the theory becomes confined to degrees of freedom which propagate along the time, but not in the special directions. And one direction was compatified on S1. So that's, that's how you see uh, the appearance of quantum mechanics from the background. It's clear. What, what is the idea? The is to put that this partition function for this inside uh, well. Uh, yes, has something to do with to quantum, to quantum mechanics on the phase space. The phase yes, space. That, that, that's, uh, that's a game. Okay, let's, let's, let's do it once again. So we have the P, the phase space, yes, is the modular space of vacuum on the, on the theory on uh, R3 times S1, yes? Now, that theory R3, we deform as follows. We take R3 and write it as R2 to sub epsilon times time. And the claim is that in the background, is in the, in the epsilon background, everything localizes to the zero point of this R2 sub epsilon. Okay, so the propagating degrees of freedom, they flow only along the time, yes? And so the path integral reduces to the path integral okay, from, from maps uh, of line to the modular space of vacuum. So in this quantum the map integral for this quantization, so real quantization. <coughs> well, it's, it's, it's holomorphic complex quantization yes. in, in practice. Okay. Yes, yes. So different path integral, we want to pull it the same. Yes, yes, but uh, yes, but it's, uh, it, yes, yes, it's, uh, well, it turns out to be the same in, in, in cohomology sector that we are interested in. That's interesting. If you have complex syncretic manifold, you don't have Hilbert space. Ah, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's not, not for real. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not a quantum. Yeah. It's not quantum mechanics. You deform algebra functions as associative algebra, something like this. But mm -hmm. uh, well, yes, I was hiding parts of the story, but uh, okay, very good. So let's discuss that, indeed. <laughs> Um, excellent. So let's discuss uh, quantization of complex integral of, uh, of complex symplectic manifolds. In this, well, in the sense of everything, and, and as deformation quantization and as a Hilbert space. Okay, so what we want from quantization, from what, what you asked for. From quantization, we want, first of all, the algebra of functions, uh, algebra of operators. And we want a module H, a module, on which those operators act, yes, the, the Hilbert space. Uh, the, the, the idea to do that in the holomorphic uh, setup is the following. It, it, might be, it might have earlier references, but I learned about it in a paper by Wheaton and uh, Bukov. And they, and they use, in a sense, the construction of uh, Kapustin Orlov. Uh, called Koizotropic A-Brain.
Okay, so so the phase space P is a, is complex holomorphic phase space, complex uh, holomorphic symplectic. Uh, in this uh, in this construction, it's important that it's actually a hyperkähler space. So on uh, this hyperkähler space, you can uh, consider the uh, sigma model, which is the maps maps from let's say to to the road sheet to the target space P. It's actually n equals four to the sigma model. Uh, okay, now uh, to do this uh, uh, holomorphic quantization in this hypercolor language, uh, the idea is uh, that in the A model, in the situation of, hyper of hypercolor space, there exists not the usual uh, Lagrangian uh, A like brains that we are used to, but also exists uh, coisotropic. For this case, just space filling. Space filling brain B, which covers uh, the whole space P. Yes, and uh, that brain B is equipped with a non flat. U1 bundle is curvature is curvature F, contrary to the usual situation of the Lagrangian A brain when the bundle is flat. So here we have a non-zero non curvature. And then it turns out that uh, this, uh, uh, the, 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 there is a, a choice of boundary conditions on this uh, brain, which correspond to the boundary conditions in the A model. When uh, the curvature and the symplectic form, okay, so it's A model with, with real symplectic form, say omega. If uh, you, you <coughs> You define an uh, operator on the tangent bundle by the formal f to minus one omega, so it's in the endomorphism of tangent bundle of p, and if it squares to minus one, then there are appropriate boundary conditions that you can put on such brain, and it defines uh, it defines actually an open A model. So in the hypercolor situation. Uh, let's uh, take some conventions. So let's take omega to be, let's say, omega i, and f, the curvature f, we choose such that it's equal to the symplectic structure omega k, then omega k to minus 1 omega i is uh, the complex structure j. Okay. So the the space of states on the open B model, uh, sorry, in the open A model, the same model states, <coughs> on the brain B, which is a space uh, feeling time uh, brain B, turns out to be is the space the space of holomorphic functions with respect to this complex structure G. So sub G uh, functions on P. Okay. G holomorphic functions.
So if you consider a string which ends by left end on the brain B and by the right, the right end also on the brain B, such strings uh, gives The space of strings which end on the brain B and the brain B itself, it uh, gives the algebra of uh, functions on the symplectic space, on the holomorphic symplectic space. They, they have to be J holomorphic functions. And uh, the the discompletes with the uh, boundary operators inserted on a, on a disk from the functions on the brain B, they give the deformation of the usual uh, product of uh, this G holomorphic functions by non-commutative product defined by the Poisson structure with respect to this complex structure G, like uh, in a deformation quantization of uh, Maxim in the holomorphic uh, setup with respect to the holomorphic Poisson structure defined by complex structure G. Okay, that's, that's uh, how you get the algebra of operators. Now, we also need to have uh, the Hilbert space, something on which those operators act. Okay, so for that, so for that we need another brain, let's say B sub H, and that would be the states of uh, quantum mechanics. And uh, this other brain B, it also has to be Lagrangian, a type Lagrangian brain. So then the, the states of quantum mechanics, they correspond to the strings, which are by left hand and on the space field in concentropic brain and by the right end on this uh, brain B, on this Lagrangian, A Lagrangian brain. So then there is a natural defined action by the operators on the states. Namely, you take the brain which represents an operator and you glue it together with a string which represents a state. So BB string, you glue to BBH string, and that gives again BBH string, so it gives again a state. And so there is a defined action of uh, the algebra of operators. So the algebra of operators is the algebra of states of BB string to the, uh, to the vector space of states of quantum mechanics, to the vector space which we called uh, H, the, the A module, which is the algebra of BBH strings. Can this be stated that HOM BB acts on HOM BBH? Yes. 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 Just, just by gluing the string. Because you discuss an S or H detection. Uh, in in HGT picture, so uh, sorry. Um, in HGT picture, we'll have uh, two brains of, uh, of this type. One, one brain will be a space feeling brain, and another would be Lagrangian. But not in an S picture. Uh, in an S picture, well, in an S picture, we just didn't discuss what the other brain is. We, 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 we didn't discuss it. But, but in principle, OK, but in principle, OK, now going back to an S picture. So you have the geometry, R times cigar geometry times this one. And the Lagrangian brain, it corresponds to the boundary conditions on this circle, which, which I didn't describe. But in order to have a two-dimensional, in order to really to have the two-dimensional theory on a cylinder, on, a, on this cylinder, R times this one, you need to have the space compact. In order to have the space compact, there need to be imposed some boundary conditions on this circle. And these boundary conditions is the choice of the other Lagrangian brain. So, so uh, 
let's look what happens when that circle is uh, shrink to zero. When it's shrink to zero, then we have here an interval. Oh, no, I don't want. Okay, so, okay, okay, let's do that. So here is an interval and the circle vibration over it. Now, we study the gauge theory on this four-dimensional space. The gauge theory on this four-dimensional space has two circles. One circle is this one, and the other circle is the circle of the vibration. When you compactify the four-dimensional uh, theory on one circle, the modular space is the hypercolor space uh, phase space P. When you compactify it on the second circle coming from uh, this uh, vibration, the phase space uh, remains uh, the same. It, it, it doesn't acquire extra modulus, it's, it's the same hypercolor space. So the result after, compactif after compactification on this circle and this circle is the space of maps from the time times this interval, and the interval has left and right boundary to P. Okay. Now, for the theory on this uh, time times interval, for this two-dimensional theory, there are boundary conditions. One boundary condition comes from the epsilon background just from shrinking the cigar geometry to the point, and it's a certain sense canonical, there is no other choice we have to make. And the other boundary condition comes from the choice, okay, it comes from our choice of boundary conditions at the, at the right end of the interval. So the boundary conditions at left, left boundary conditions. This is quasitropic brain and the right boundary conditions. These are the Lagrangian brain. So the space of states on, on such string is, this, is the H, the space H, which is the module for the algebra of operators. And if you do the string, which, is, uh, which, which goes from the, from the brain B to the brain B itself, it gives the algebra of operators. So let's do let's discuss this in more details in the exam in first first let's discuss the example when P is the Hitchin system. So if P to U is the Hitchin system, then the uh, complex structure I is when this vibration is holomorphic and you have the mo you, you have this description in the complex structure i by the modular space of higgs bundles so the algebra a is supposed to be the Omega i deformation, one over epsilon, 
and deformation of the space of iholomorphic functions on P. And so these are exactly the commuting Hamiltonians of the Hitchin systems. So this is the same as holomorphic functions, functions on the base. Are because they are constant along the fibers. Yes. Okay. Uh, there is a uh, there is a mirror symmetry picture. Which is T duality along the fibers. the fibers A and it maps this to the dual Hitchin system. So if this is Hitchin for the group G, here would be Hitchin system for the Langlands dual group. So you have some P Langlands dual projected to U. The base is the same, so it's just uh, T duality along the fibers. So the fibers, the, the, the fiber tori are replaced by dual tori, and it turns out that uh, the resulting modular space is the modular space of uh, the dual Hitchin system. Yeah, but this algebra is just polynomials and several variables, yeah? Uh, this one? Yeah. Yes. And deforms trivially, yeah? Well, well, yes, yes, yes. In a sense, trivial, yes, because they are commuting. Yes, they are commuting Hamiltonians. Yes, yes. So, um, commuting for the Poisson bracket. Huh? Commuting for the Poisson. Commuting for the Poisson bracket. Yes, commuting for the Poisson bracket. Yes. So. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, OK, so uh, now let's look at the mirror map on the, of the T-duality of this uh, brain B, of the coisotropic brain B. So it's a, a brain in the A model of the Lagrangian type, but uh, the space of uh, strings, BB uh, strings, they are uh, they are they are holomorphic in complex structure I. So, okay. So the conventions here is that you take the A model with respect to the symplectic structure K, and you take the curvature F on the space filling a brain equal to the symplectic structure G. So the resulting uh, complex structure from F minus one omega K is i. Okay, so we have i holomorphic holomorphic functions here. So this brain maps to the Lagrangian brain for the dual uh, Hitchin system. So it's 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 in the PL, and it covers the base, the base U. So this brain is known as brain of hoppers. So namely, you consider the dual Hitchin system in the complex structure J. It's um, just a, a B brain. So it's a B. I mean, B model of complex structure J, uh, J brain in uh, the right theory. So if if this is 
the base u. Then this brain of operas, let me uh, call it maybe n. And it covers the base of the Hitchin system. So at, uh, at each fiber, it's just a point because it was a uh, it was fiber filling brain on, on this side, and after T-duality, uh, in each fiber it maps to a point, and it becomes a cover of uh, the uh, modular space of uh, Hitchin system. So it's a certain uh, s subspace of the uh, space of uh, the modular space of dual Hitchin system in complex structure G, when it's a modular space of uh, uh, JLC uh, flat connections and uh, such flat conne connections are uh, called um, opers by Billingson Drinfield. Okay, so the <coughs> okay, sorry. Um, now the algebra, sorry. We need to discuss the other brain, the Lagrangian brain, which uh, we didn't specify. But uh, anyways, the, the Lagrangian brain, which defines the space of states of, uh, of the system, is a half-dimensional brain here. And after the T-duality transformation, it maps again to the half-dimensional uh, uh, brain here. So let me call it. It's not quasitropic brain, ah, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm discussing the other brain, this, this Lagrangian brain, yes. So the, the mirror image of this uh, Lagrangian brain BL is again Lagrangian brain. So let's call it BL well, dual or mirror, mi mirror of it. And so it intersects now the uh, mirror of uh, the Lagrangian of the coins, the tropic brain, in some uh, discrete uh, set of points. And the intersection of BL with L so these are the this is the spectrum of quantum Hitchin system. So this is this is just a um, mirror mirror symmetry uh, picture for uh, Billinson and Drinfield uh, uh, quantization of uh, uh, Hitchin Hamiltonians. So on, the, on 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 the right side after mirror transformation. From the quasitropic brain, you get this Lagrangian brain of Oppers. From the uh, brain of states, you get also Lagrangian brain, and the intersection defines the spectrum of the Hitchin system. One, it's an infinite intersection because one will break in one structure, one will break in another. Uh, if, 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 intersection is infinite, yeah. Uh, this is spectrum. Well, it's, it's discrete. No, no, it's discrete. But infinite. But infinite, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. It's countable, but discrete, yes, yes. Yes, yes, intersect operas with another brain, yes. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, for I'll die for AGT picture. For AGT picture, let me just uh, briefly uh, state the claim without explanation because I want to explain more on quantum groups and its uh, quantum gr groups relate to uh, <coughs> to the NS picture. So for AGT picture, the space of states that uh, uh, comes out is the following. So H is uh, B. Sorry. So you consider the Hitchin system to you and take one brain B to be that quasitropic
that we discussed over there. So the, <coughs> the space of functions here are i holomorphic. Yes. Yes, you don't have cigar geometry. Yes, so. Yes, yes. So that what I wanted to skip, but because because I want to because I want to explain more. Why you should go to the same on epsilon ratio epsilon fixed? Yeah. Yes. 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 You consider, so you have uh, you have uh, action of two parameters epsilon one epsilon two, and uh, they correspond to the two circles, yes, to the T two vibration over something. We don't have yet to specify that something, but in a sense there is a two torus T two, this parameter epsilon one epsilon two, is like an inverse radio. Now, uh, it, uh, <coughs> so. If AGT story is applied to the Hitchin systems, then all those n equals four, sorry, n equals, n equals to four-dimensional theories uh, can be described by the, by the following construction. You take two comma zero theory and uh, put it on R four times C, that the C on which Hitchin system lives, and then if you decompose that R four into R two plus the two torus with two epsilons times c, and do the reduction of the 2 comma 0 theory, first on these two torus, you find, let's say of type g, you find n equals 4 g super young mills on r2 times c, and the tau parameter of this g super young mills would be given by the ratio of epsilons. That's the basic property of the, one of the defining properties of uh, 2 comma 0 theory. When you compactify it, yes, yes. So you should think about epsilon 1 over epsilon 2 as really a, a elliptic modulus, elliptic parameter of uh, this elliptic curve tau 2. Okay? And uh, therefore, there, there, is a, there is a natural inversion transformation. So um, there is Langlands dual, epsilon 1 over epsilon 2 for for n equals four super young mills dual, which actually uh, which gives us uh, a hint that uh, at the end uh, the AGT quantization it really depends not only just on epsilon one or epsilon two, but it depends on epsilon one over two interpreted as a as a elliptic modulus uh, of a. Uh, sorry, as, uh, as elliptic modulus of elliptic curve. So it's invariant under inversion of epsilon 1 or epsilon 2 inverted. So here, uh, okay, so then the, the, the two brains which appear for the space of states in the AGT picture, for the space of states on the theory, take the theory on uh, R3 times the time and consider the space of states here. So the space of states here, it comes as a space of states uh, of strings uh, with, with the left end on this quasi-tropic brain B. And the right end is on the brain of hoppers. And which comes by the mirror symmetry transformation from the dual uh, quasi-tropic brain. Or you okay, and, and, and here you do quantization by J holomorphic functions. In other words, the space of functions on uh, if you if you took if you pick a different supercharge in this n equals uh, for a uh, two-dimensional sigma model, the, the different supercharges correspond to the uh, J holomorphic functions on the space-feeding brain, and so they act from the left on these uh, B end states. 
So, so home b to n is acted home bb on the left. Okay. Uh, now in the mirror in the mirror dual picture. So n is the brain of opera, which comes as a mirror symmetry of the of the dual uh, of the dual Hitchin uh, system. Okay, so this is the space of states, and this is the algebra of operators, which uh, acts uh, from from the left to the right. So this algebra of operators in in, in, in practice is uh, okay. In practice of uh, in in GT story is Virus or algebra or W algebra. <laughs> W algebra with the uh, parameters uh, epsilon one of epsilon two and g. But also you can describe that in the mirror uh, symmetrical picture. And in, in the mirror symmetrical picture, okay, this uh, the, the the space of states between b and n would be would be dual to the space of states between the opera brain, which is a mirror symmetry of B, and coisotropic brain B in the uh, mirror uh, dual description of the Hitchin system. And now this space of states is acted by B dual, B dual strings on the right. So in the AGT story, the uh, in, the AGT, in the AGT story, the space of states H is uh, a module with respect to the action of uh, algebra of uh, BB string on the left and B dual B dual strings on the right. So if you if you take the quantization of uh, that in this uh, uh, complex structure G, yes, so then. The quantization you, 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 is quantization of the module space of, flat, of GC flat connections. And so it's a complexified version of uh, uh, what Witten uh, has done for the quantization of the module space of flat connections of compact group G on Riemann surface and related to, to Vesa Zumina uh, Witten model and to uh, Chen Simons. So here the quantization of the module space of GC flat connections it on, on C. It gives uh, the complex version GC Chen Simons. On R times C, and the complexified Chern Simons with the say level K S H V D A plus two third A cube. It turns out uh, that that it can be properly uh, quantized by thinking about it as a boundary term in the n equals four. Supersymmetric Young Mills with the coupling parameter tau equal to k plus uh, dual Coxeter number, or the <coughs> electric mirror electric symmetric symmetric dual of n equals four super Young Mills with the uh, inverse coupling constant of the order equal to one over k h plus v. So So the instant on counting parameter exponent of uh, two pi i over k plus h v is uh, that uh, uh, q parameter of uh, Chern Simon theory that we have started from here. Okay, now let me. 
the remaining time, let me actually focus on uh, the NS situation when the integrable system is not a Hitchin system, but it's a trigonometric or elliptic version. Uh, no, no, it's actually that one. It has, yes, 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 it has. Uh, and I will explain this, yes. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so for this series of trigonometric and uh, rational trigonometric and elliptic, we start not from the Hitchin system, um, but uh, as we discussed uh, in the first lecture or in the second lecture, so the Hitchin system it came from the Poisson, from the symplectic surface T star of C, and you consider G bundles there. Now, if uh, the fiber, so the fiber here can be thought as uh, as a cusp, as elliptic curve with a cusp, and then the modular space of G bundles on this on cusp elliptic curve. is uh, the Lie algebra. If instead of uh, a cusp elliptic curve, you take elliptic curve with a node singularity, then the modular space of G bundles is the group itself. And if it's full elliptic curve, then just bun G on uh, this elliptic curve, which we, uh, let's call it E sub tau. So pr from perspective of uh, now to have the total space uh, to have the total space symplectic, well at least <coughs> at least what what we know now what we can do is we have to restrict to the case when the base C is of genus zero one. So for these cases, C is genus zero one, and then uh, I like to uh, draw. The, 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 the whole table as uh, C horizontal times C vertical, where C horizontal and C vertical could be C, C times, or elliptic curve, some other elliptic curve, C, uh, elliptic curve horizontal, elliptic curve vertical. And we study G bundles here. So what it corresponds to the gauge uh, on, on, on the side of the gauge series? So on the side of the gauge series, uh, let's uh, uh, consider the following thing. Let's take gauge theory in, in four, five, or six dimensions, which is defined by the gauge group G, a product of SU and I gauge groups, where I runs over the nodes of some, uh, some graph gamma, which we call queer graph. And gamma, as we reviewed in the second lecture for the conditions of asymptotically free or conformal, uh, conformal con completeness of the theory, is AD or fine AD graph. So for example, let me write E6 or E6 hat. And you put uh, like N, 2N, and so on. Um, uh, a number of colors at each node, and you put hypermultiplets which interact between the nodes which are connected. So this is the, the gauge theory. The representation for the hypermultiplet is space of humps from an i and j when i and j are leaked, and also for the fundamental uh, multiplets from an i to some fixed uh, flavor spaces fi. So dim fi is uh, the number of flavors 
the number of fundamental flavors in ice node. Okay. So the flavor group of symmetry here, F, is a product of SUFI. Okay. The, 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 the gauge symmetry is a product of SU and R. If I can, I need the uh, No, no, no. There, there, there has to be a constraint satisfied that uh, 2n, that the Cartan matrix Cij on Ng has to be greater or equal than Fi. So in the case of affine quivers, Fi has to be 0. So you take that gauge theory in four dimensions and you define the partition function since we reviewed over there. So you take the module space of this G, let me put subscript G gauge, okay, G gauge uh, instantons on uh, C2 and compute the uh, cohomology classes. You, 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 you find the partition function and uh, all that. So that's what you do with gauge theory. Now it turns out that the phase space P for uh, the, the, the integrable system associated to the gauge theory, P, is uh, the modular space. Okay, so the modular space. Of now we have uh, uh, two cases depending on whether gamma is finite or affine. So let let me introduce notations. So if, if gamma is, is uh, affine, then gamma bar would denote the finite, the respective uh, finite uh, quiver. So it's the modular space of gamma bar monopoles on uh, C horizontal uh, times S1, sorry, just of gamma monopoles on C horizontal times, times S1, if gamma is finite, or gamma bar instantons, maybe let me put Better G, G sub gamma or G sub gamma bar, the, the Mackay corresponding groups on C horizontal times elliptic curve E vertical if gamma is affine. And the elliptic modulus of this vertical curve uh, is equal by the product of the gauge coupling constants Q to. A, I check the dual Coxeter numbers. So the horizontal, the horizontal curve is the dual one on which we compactify the 6D theory. So for the rational case, I will draw the table. Here would be C vertical, it's easy, C star, or elliptic curve vertical, and that would be C horizontal, C, C star, and uh, E. So this is for the 4D theory, that's for the 5D theory on S1, and that's for 6D theory on the dual one. Uh, now, we have the modular space of G monopoles on the space, on the space C horizontal uh, times just a circle, the compact part from here. On S1 times C horizontal. And uh, the situation for finite quivers or with monopoles is the situation when it's possible to have flavor symmetries attached here. So actually, uh, these monopoles, they are allowed to have singularities. So with singularities of Dirac type, uh, 
And the location of this singularity is projected to the horizontal curve is exactly determined by the mass, by the fundamental mass of uh, the fundamental multiplet. So, so for fundamental multiplet of i's of i's node, so that for su and i group with mass m, with mass m, uh, insert Dirac singularity in, uh, for this uh, monopoles on C1 times C horizontal by taking I's uh, co covoid, which is a map from S1 to G, G sub gamma, What is the maximal torus of it? Okay, and you just embed the, the Dirac abelian monopole, which has a singularity of the order one over R squared for the scalar field phi in the, in the monopole equations. At uh, the point, okay, at, at, at the point whose projection on the horizontal curve is equal to the mass. So at point. M on uh, in the in the C horizontal. We don't specify location of uh, this point in the in the in the vertical uh, circle uh, as well. This is the work, total space of integrable system. Oh, what is it? Uh, yes, yes, yes. This is the total space of integrable system. Okay. So the modular space of uh, G monopoles on S1 times CH with singularities of the rock type, as I described. So they parameterized by masses and by the appropriate uh, co-weights, depending on for which node this is a fundamental point. So this is the total space of integrable system corresponding to the theories with a finite quiver and the number of fundamental masses. Now let's uh, look at this. Uh, 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 modular space and a holomorphic uh, complex structure. Ah, well, first of all, it's hypercolor space. It's hypercolor space because it's uh, monopole equations. But we can look on it in one of complex structures, in the complex structure I, where it's a projection, uh, where the projection to the base is I holomorphic. And uh, in this complex structure I, one can describe the space as follows. So this, uh, this actually was studied by I mean, independently of this monopole construction, it was studied just per se as Hurtubis Markman Markman system. So you can you can describe it as a modular space of uh, G bundles on CH, and then you take group-valued uh, Higgs-like field instead of uh, Lie algebra, but in a group. So you consider meromorphic. G valued section. And moreover, uh, you fix the, 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 the singularity, the poles of this meromorphic G valued section uh, by this condition. So uh, if you do that on a compact uh, space, let's say if CH is elliptic curve, so that we don't have to specify anything on the uh, the boundary, then the dimension of this module space is is uh, two a row. This is the while vector. Uh, 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 yes, yeah, so. It's a sum over a phi, sum over i, to rho phi. That's the, the same letter denotes the number of flavors in i's node. So, oh, sorry. 
I'm sorry. But will be it's the same as G bundles on certain sur some surface. Or? Well, uh, you, you need to be careful. It should be like G bundles on. Uh, on CH times uh, C star with uh, with something what you do at those singular points which which correspond to those singularities yes uh, yes but but just in a, in a in a perspective in the in the, in the perspective of Hessian system in complex in, in complex structure I this is just holomorphic G bundles on CH and the choice of meromorphic G valued uh, uh, section uh, which is which is group valued. Uh, which, which, which has poles of, of that type. And then it has a spectral curve construction and uh, all that, so you can, you can repeat everything what you do with the, with the Hitchin system uh, for this situation. O okay, and now quantization. So, oh, no, uh, well, yes, so, so let me take about, uh, talk about quantization for the other situation when the G bundles are correspond to a fine quiver, then you take just the G bundles on elliptic curve in vertical directions times uh, horizontal. So that's G, G bundles on EV times uh, CH. So with no insertions? With no insertions, yes. Yes, no insertions for, for gamma of a fine type. Okay, and now let me write down the table of the algebras which come as a quantization of uh, the symplectic spaces. And so this would be the nature algebras which act on the, the quantum system in the NS, in the NS type of deformation of the gauge theory. So the uh, Poisson structures on this uh, modular space of uh, G bundles times neuromorphic G value section, let's do the first case in monopoles. So CH, C vertical is C star. So the Poisson structure is uh, of quadratic type. I mean quadratic type in the fibers. C star invariant, and uh, on, 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 on groups, since in the vertical direction we have the, this modular spa space taken value in a group uh, element, and this uh, quadratic type Poisson structure was defined by Sklanian, and then it uh, uh, later led to uh, uh, quantum groups. So namely, you on a group G, let that okay, so let's let's do this. So if G is a Lie algebra, then G star has Poisson structure, constant Poisson structure. And then you can you can consider the space of functions on G star and uh, quantize it. And it turns out to be just a universal envelope in algebra of G. Yes, if, uh, if, you, if you have a, a bilinear form on G, then you can identify G and G star and just think about uh, defining data as a, as a Poisson structure on G itself. Now, if G is a Lie group, Then, if you if you repeat the same uh, construction taken as a Poisson structure, this this Klein bracket, then the uh, quantization of the algebra of functions on G with this uh, Klein uh, bracket gives the quantum group U Q of G. Uh, 
where, where, where G uh, uh, has no hat, it's a finite dimension. Now here uh, we have uh, something more. We have uh, one extra loop, right? We have the horizontal curve and uh, we have the Higgs field, which is valid in the group itself. And so it, it, it's natural that the quantization of uh, this space uh, uh, gives the following. It gives when CH is C, C star, or elliptic curve, respectively, you obtain from the quantization the Youngian of G, UQ of G hat, or quantum elliptic group is parameter Q and tau of G. So these notations are not uh, totally consistent because, uh, but this, this accepted notations in the literature, this has, this thing has had, this thing doesn't have, have had, this also doesn't have had, but uh, con conceptually all of them is a deformation uh, quantization of the modular space of uh, this meromorphic, uh, meromorphic G uh, valued uh, Higgs bundles on the uh, uh, curve C horizontal. Okay, so it's, uh, you, you, you consider the uh, current algebra G of, uh, of say, horizontal and apply deformation quantization to the space and you get this, these groups. Yeah, I can see the formal, uh, formal function list here. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so so in this case, uh, th th this is the rational this is the rational limit of this thing when when uh, the uh, when the two punctures uh, collide, and uh, this is the limit of this thing when tau is sent to infinity. But in the sense is that like symmetric algebra of infinite dimensional space of G uh, Lorentz series. Yes, 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 yes. So, so here, this construction, when you, uh, when you have taken just Poisson Drake on the Lie group, uh, produces UQ of G. And instead of Lie group, you take LG. Okay, so LG produces, okay, so deformation quantization of LG produces uh, one of those things, uh, respectively, well, depending on, on how you treat uh, this loop, how you, 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 you treat the spectral parameter, so it's just G, in Xi, and depending uh, whether you decide that Xi uh, sits in C, in C star, or elliptic curve, you get one of these quantum groups. Okay. Now, if uh, C, okay, the second case, one instantons. So, uh, instantons uh, can be thought also in this language but instead of uh, G valued section where G is fine dimensional Lie group, you think about G is a, is a fine Lie group. So you, you, you lift it with one more loop. And uh, correspondingly, uh, here you end up with Yang Yang of G hat, UQ of G2 hats. And this thing, I, I don't know, I, ha I, I haven't found it in literature, maybe. There would be some troubles to define um, elliptic version, elliptic quantum group of uh, a finely algebra. And uh, the, 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 the trouble can be uh, traced back to this, to, to, to the fact that the uh, space on which we are trying to define this algebra, this space is a compact, is a product of two elliptic curves. And it's not quite clear what, what we are actually uh, quantizing there. So, so this is, I would put as, as a question mark, but uh, those, uh, these algebras, they, they all are, are perfectly defined, and uh, these are the algebras which act on the space of observables, so in the, in the corresponding theories. Yeah, uh, you mean uh, uh, hyperbolic for Katsun, the algebra? No, 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 here, 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 uh, uh, where, here? Yeah. No, no, this is, uh, this is the, what's called in literature toroidal, quantum uh, toroidal group. So, uh, in terms of uh, Dreamfield, so, okay, so, <coughs> so, 
So Dreamfield had uh, two papers on it, which, which called in literature now first construction and second construction. So, so for the for the second second construction, the following: you start with arbitrary g can be arbitrary affine. Uh, sorry, arbitrary Kasmudi, generalized Kasmudi. Sense of G hat for such a G. Yes, yes, and uh, and uh, and Greenfield defined U U Q of fine of G. Yes. So so if if G is uh, okay, if G is a fine cosmological algebra, then common convention in the literature is to call this thing uh, quantum toroidal algebra. And uh, yes, so. And if G is a finite dimensional algebra, why do we call them? You, re you recover U Q of G hat. Yes, you recover G Q of the hat. So, so, uh, so maybe instead of these notations, I like more uh, the f the uh, the following notation. So all all that ca can be uh, can be called as follows. You consider the okay. You consider uh, the, the the algebra of uh, of meromorphic uh, functions, which are valued in the in the group G. So you take G. Of the horizontal curve, and and then uh, do epsilon uh, deformation of the uh, universal envelope universal envelope in algebra of uh, of so this part. functions or form for Lorentz series of point. Well, in, 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 in principle, meromorphic functions. When you when you fix uh, that uh, the radius are located in uh, some specific uh, points, that would uh, give a symplectic slice in, in the corresponding space, or like like, like an orbit. The, the points of finite order. The the points of finite order. Yes. 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 So. Uh, 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 right. So when we fix location, okay. Now, uh, finally. The final statement for would be from our last paper with uh, Nikita and Samson, the following. So for quivers of finite type, okay, when we have uh, a location of poles parameterized by uh, this lambda i hat from S1 to Tg at points mi f, yes? So f, f runs from 1 to fi to the number of flavors in the ice node. Uh, so the, 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 the algebra. Yes, so the algebra A is a representation of uh, this thing. Of U sub epsilon of uh, G of C H on a tensor product of what what's called prefundamental modules L uh, I M I F over I and F and these guys are they were defined just very recently, not 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 in the original papers of Greenfield and uh, friends. These are prefundamental modules. So this due to the general definition for G has been done by Jim and Hernandez in 2011, and it comes after a work of uh, Bajanov, Lukianov, Zmalochikov. 
think I am uh, 95, who studies integrable system in uh, massive, in, ma uh, in massive two-dimensional uh, field theory, it's not conformal field theory. So, uh, yes, so you consider the representation of that uh, Youngian or quantum of fine algebra on a, on a module which is, which is given by the tensor product of these pre-fundamental modules, and it's labeled by the fundamental masses of the fundamental multiplets, as we uh, discussed over here. So what are pre-fundamental modules? Well, if you're, if you're familiar a little bit with the uh, uh, quantum groups and know what Greenfield polynomial is, so... Greenfield polynomial, so there are uh, operators usually called uh, Psi. This is like uh, a diagonal uh, Cartan uh, currents in the definition of quantum of fine algebra. And uh, at the highest uh, weight of the fundamental uh, module, so Psi on highest weight in the case of fundamental modules, acts by the ratio of uh, Pi of Xi Q to one half divided by Pi of Xi Q to minus one half. So that's the usual uh, fundamental evaluation modules. The prefundamental modules have uh, the highest weight of this, uh, the same generator of Psi I given just by polynomial, by, by polynomial with one root, just, ju just by uh, <coughs> polynomial with one root and the root is uh, at the point in uh, Mi. So, uh, okay, so conclusion, yes, we need conclusion. Uh, well, we, yeah, I think maybe we should just go for tea, but uh, the conclusion, well, okay, 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 let's, let's do conclusion. So, conclu one, one conclusion, you started from the modular space, from the cohomology of modular space of G bundles, where G is the product of SU and I. S, U, and I, yes, over, over some Dinkin diagram. And uh, magically, you, you've related it to the quantum group uh, defined by G, which, which is the Dinkin, uh, Dinkin quiver. So, so if, you, if, you, if you try to prove it uh, mathematically, um, I'd, like, uh, I'd like to see it. So we have, a, we have explanation from the uh, mirror symmetry and uh, string dualities, but to explain it, we have to go to 10-dimensional theory. So how how you go from the, how how do you, how do you see the action of this uh, quantum affine group defined by the AD type on the modular space of bundles of of of, of SU and I bundles on on C two? It's not uh, it's not obvious. So the the, 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 the conclusion is that uh, physics tells us something mysterious and interesting things about mathematics. <laughs> okay.